I have made a couple different videos about Robert the Fox. That's because he has a particular achievement centered around him, while he is the fox. I love speedrunning this achievement. It's a quick run with little RNG, but not too much, and it's got some competition to it. Today, I'm going to do a little mini Giga Chat guide on Robert the Fox with the explicit goal of getting Wily as the Fox within 5 minutes using speedrun strategies that you can actually use in regular games. There are two particular things I'll be showing off to you today that you can use in even non speedrun games. Let's take a look at Robert the Giga Chad. So, the goal of Wily as the Fox is to convert a Greek kingdom's counties to Catholic. The Greek kingdoms in the game are considered to be Epirus, Hellas, and Thessalonica. We're going to be going for Epirus, since we can most easily get all of its counties. We're going to need a couple different things to pull this off. Firstly, a lot of piety. Second, a lot of learning. And third, control of the empire. To make this happen, we're going to use a custom ruler. Remember that in ZK3, you can make a single custom character and the game will still be in Iron Man mode. We're going to make a very specific custom character for the Byzantine Empire. Go ahead and make a homosexual, Ashkenazi, unreformed, Bompo emperor. He needs the following traits. Calm Calm, humble, content, compassionate, and trusting. Make him 120 years old and give him a lot of diseases. We want this character to die very quickly. I'll explain the reason behind each of these choices as they come up, don't worry. Once he's been created, hop in as Robert the Fox, without forgetting to change the game to Iron Man mode, of course. Robert's first move in the game is to check his perks. We need his right hand side of the martial tree for this run. This is because we marked the Byzantine Emperor as homosexual. We need him to like us, so Robert's gotta be a shining example of gallantry for him. If you've got the right hand side selected, go ahead and swear fealty to the Emperor. You'll probably have to take high obligations, but it doesn't matter because this fealty won't last long. The moment you swear fealty, declare an independence war, and then immediately surrender. This puts you in jail. Here's your first RNG check. If the Emperor's opinion of you is higher than minus 40, the run continues. If not, the run ends here. As punishment for your crimes, the Emperor will demand your conversion. And, if his opinion is lower than minus 40, he'll banish you. If he doesn't banish you though, you just get converted, and now you're the only unreformed Bonpo vassal. This is a way to change faiths for free, even in regular games. If your liege doesn't absolutely hate you, you can intentionally get imprisoned and have your faith changed to theirs. This is important because of the cultural tradition bound by faith from our liege's Ashkenazi culture. This tradition says that only characters of the same faith can inherit land. Given that we are the only vassal who can inherit, you can probably see where this is going. Because the emperor is 120 years old and horrifically ill, he will die very soon. Once he dies, we begin the mid-game of this run. We now control the empire, but this doesn't really mean much. We need to control all of Epirus's counties which there is a way to do relatively easily using broken civil war mechanics. First off, raise crown authority to level 2 if you can. If you can't, raise it after the war. Grant the county of Burgas to a Greek Orthodox man with the brave trait and at least 8 martial. This is because any character with at least 8 martial will always choose to lead their own armies. We choose brave because it doubles the chance that he gets captured in battle, and it also means he'll refuse imprisonment. He needs to be Greek and Orthodox because when you imprison a vassal, other vassals sharing a culture and faith with that vassal are more likely to rise up in rebellion. We want the entire realm to rise up optimally, and we need the dukes in Epirus to rise up for this run to work at all. Raise your troops beside Burgas so they can be ready for war. Go ahead and imprison the Count of Burgas. He will say no 100% of the time because he is brave, which will cause him to declare a war on you against your tyranny. Wait for his army to begin standing and then immediately pounce on it. You should absolutely decimate it and, hopefully, capture him. If you don't though, just back off, wait until he raises his two knights or whatever he has left, and pounce on it again, over and over, until you capture him. You will almost always get him within three battles, and you have a good chance to get him within one or two. Once you've got him, you instantly win the war, and the entire realm is forced to surrender, because that's definitely how that should work. As much as I love this little exploit for its usefulness in the game, both inside of and outside of speedruns, this is absolutely broken and needs to be changed. Moving on, you've now got a crap ton of prisoners. Everyone in the east, we can ransom for gold, we need exactly a thousand so we can make the kingdom of Sicily and Epirus. Ransom whoever you want except the dukes in Epirus, but don't ransom everyone, we need these prisoners later. Go ahead and revoke the duchies in Epirus, you should end up directly controlling the vast majority of the kingdom directly, with the exception of maybe a count or two in Cephalonia. Here comes the slightly time consuming part of the run. Go ahead and grant every county in Epirus to an orthodox character with the lowest possible learning and the cynical trait. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, just that they have zero learning and cynical. This is because we need them to accept a conversion to Catholic for this run to work. In order to convert though, we need piety, but can you guess how we'll get that piety? That's right, we'll prove our devotion to God by ritually sacrificing every single prisoner we got in that tyranny war. Because they were all traitorous scum, we get no tyranny as well. 
This should get us about 2,000 piety, which is what we'll use to end this run. Extremely important note here though, do not execute the Ecumenical Patriarch. He will cause Orthodox's fervor to spike if you execute him, so instead, ransom him. Before doing anything with your piety, divorce your current wife and remarry the highest learning woman you can find. Once you're married, assign her to support your learning skill. Now we're actually going to convert to Iconoclasm. This is because there's a special decision available for Iconoclasts. We can establish the Iconoclast Patriarchate in order to tank Orthodox's fervor and boost Iconoclasms. After you do that, convert to Catholicism, and hopefully that will be the end of the run for you. Assuming the leftover lords who didn't handpick in Cephalonia don't have Zealous or High Learning, they'll convert. And your handpicked Cynical Lords in Epirus will definitely convert. Remember that when converting religions, if the capital county of a character is their current faith and they convert, their capital will change to the new faith. This means the Epirus will instantly convert and we get the achievement. In my case, the achievement didn't pop up because I already have it, but you can verify that you would have gotten the achievement by checking three things. Do you have the Kingdom of Sicily? Do you have the Kingdom of Epirus? And is every county in the Kingdom of Epirus Catholic? If that's the case, the achievement would pop. Getting this run isn't too hard, and there are only a few RNG checks, so it shouldn't be too tough. I managed to get it in less than 5 minutes, which is pretty pog, but maybe you can do it faster? Hop on to either my Discord or the CK3 Speedrunning Discord if you'd like to participate. I should also mention that this strategy was not invented by me. Sandwich created this strategy, and I merely performed it with the speed it deserves. Check out Sandwich's original video, which will be in the description, if you'd like to see the origins of this run. You can also find my current world record holding run via the description or the card in the top right, if you just want to see the run unedited straight from Twitch. Thank you for your time.